Hey guys, it's me, Soren, back with another video. Today is day 17, day 17 of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Jesse Maple, who is an American cinematographer and film director who is most noted as the first Black American woman to be accepted into the Cinematographers Union, and also the first Black American female independent filmmaker of the contemporary film age, so like our current. Uh, sort of modern day film era. She's considered a pioneer for the civil rights of black Americans and women in the film industry. Mabel was born in Louisiana in 1947 into a family of four brothers and seven sisters. She worked in a bacteriology laboratory and initially got into filmmaking simply because she didn't want to work in the lab anymore and was tired of seeing nothing but negative images of blacks in film. She applied and was accepted to the National Education Television Training School, a program run by WNET Public Television in New York City. The program was established for Black Americans to learn behind-the-scenes camera jobs in order to get into the union, but funding for the program was short-lived, and Maple said it was so successful that after one year, they shut it down. She also received film training through Ossie Davis's Third World Cinema Corporation, which was a company formed to promote film roles for Black actors. Maple began her career in film as an apprentice editor for Gordon Parks' early 70s feature films, Shaft's Big Score and The Super Cops. After being admitted to the Film Editors Union, Maple studied and passed the examination for the Cinematographers Union. Yet a prolonged legal struggle occurred throughout 1973, with Maple suing various unions, television stations, and guilds for their reluctance to admit her as both black and a woman after she passed her cinematographer's examination. In 1974, Maple won her suit and became the first black American woman admitted to the International Photographers of Motion Picture and Television Union. Also in 1974, Maple co-founded LJ Films Productions with her husband, Leroy Patton, who's also a cinematographer, in order to produce short documentaries. Through LJ Films, she self-published a book on her journey to being a cinematographer entitled How to Become a Union Camera Woman in 1976. The book details how she took her case to court to fight the race-based and gendered discrimination that initially kept her out of the union and also included sections like filmmaking, getting in the door, what every union camera person must know, and where the work is. Maple became a news camera woman handling camera work and editing for New York's ABC, CBS, and NBC affiliate TV stations, which was a job that caused her to come to the realization that she could edit the story in the camera and prevent the editor from taking a positive story and making a negative one out of it, particularly in stories with a race element where black people were often left out. According to Maple, I would shoot the story in a way where they couldn't cut the black person out of it. They had to see both sides of what happened and what the black person had to say. Through LJ Productions, Maple also released several documentaries, including one on the use of methadone to treat heroin addiction and another on black economic power. Released in 1976, Black Economic Power, Reality or Fantasy, that's the name of it, was filmed for roughly $10,000 and Maple stated it is about the economic development of black people in this country and how they feel about their progress thus far. In February 1976, Ebony Magazine ran a feature on Jessie Maple where she first mentioned that she was working on her own film project. Five years later, in 1981, Maple released the independent feature film Will, a Harlem-based drama about a girls basketball coach struggling with heroin addiction. Shot on location in 1980s Harlem, the film focused on title character Will as he fights a heroin addiction after adopting a street youth. The film also discusses the effects of drug addiction on a community, showing a close-knit Black Harlem pre-gentrification as it began to be rocked by drugs. Will made a statement on the importance of Black support and family, explored through the main character's mentorship of a 12-year-old Black child called Little Brother, and his relationship with his wife, played by a young Loretta Devine in her very first role. Devine filmed the role just after being cast in Dreamgirls and was paid $500 for the part. Will was shot on 16mm film, 
I hope I pronounced that right, <laughs> with a $12,000 budget. In a review, Will was described as capturing the essence of Harlem in the early 1980s as a place that's not entirely perfect, but self-sufficient and able to help each other. With that release, Maple became the first Black American woman to direct an independent feature-length film in the post-civil rights era. In order to show her own film and other independent movies by Black American filmmakers, Maple and her husband also opened the 20 West Theater, Home of Black Cinema, that was the full title, 20 West Theater, Home of Black Cinema, in the basement of their Harlem Brownstone in 1982. For 10 years, they showcased both studio-produced and independent Black films, and 20 West was one of the first theaters to showcase films by Spike Lee. In 1989, Maple released her second independent film, Twice as Nice, about twin sisters who play basketball. In 2005, Maple donated her personal collection to the Black Film Center Archive at Indiana University, and they maintain an extensive collection of her papers, films, logbooks, photos, personal correspondence, and more in their Jesse Maple collection. New York women in film and television called Maple's work a forerunner of the independent minority filmmaking that would cultivate directors like Spike Lee and Lee Daniels. Jesse Maple still lives and works in New York City. And that's Jesse Maple, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I super love this woman. I super love her work. Uh, there's not very much information out there on her, but I will include, of course, links and information in the description box uh, for those of you that want to check out more about her. I will also include links to the Black Film Center archive at Indiana, Univers Indiana University. Excuse me, you can access a lot of their stuff online. Um, and again, they have like a really extensive, co extensive collection of her stuff. I would love to get there one day and see it in person uh, after COVID and when we're able to travel and whatnot. But yeah, that's uh, Jesse Maple, a hidden figure. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with our next hidden figure we're more than halfway through it moving right along um and hopefully you guys have been enjoying it thus far so see you guys tomorrow peace